Hi, I'm Martin and this is Make Your Own Sound, the channel in which we'll be talking about how to create your own sound mixing console, episode 3. Now, as promised in the previous episode, we'll get to work building knowledge for what we need and how to use it, starting with the software. All modern digital consoles out there consist of hardware and software, plain and simple. What we'll do is no different, maybe just the packaging. But where our console stands out is in diversity. We have so many options. You can choose one of several dozens programs and pair it with a great variety of sound controllers and then attach to that even greater variety of peripherals. It's not like we don't have a choice. We have to be careful though. Not everything works well enough for this job and we'll have to choose wisely. But we're here today to talk about the software. As many of you may already know, you can take Reaper or Cubase or Ableton or Pro Tools or Logic or almost any digital audio workstation and make it work for life purposes. I've done it and I suppose many of you have done it also. And for those of you who haven't, I'll do a video explaining how in the future. But may I suggest something different? All programs mentioned above are actually in their core and purpose software for music creation and mixing and mastering and overall their studio programs. But there is another, one that is specially written with a single purpose in mind, to be a software audio console for live events. And what a surprise, that's exactly the name of the program. I give you the software audio console, or as its maker shortly calls it, SAC. And, speaking of its maker, his name is Bob Lentini and he's a sound engineer from Las Vegas. I'm not gonna spend much time talking about the man himself or the exact story of the software, because, if you're curious, you can read all of that in his official site. More on that in a minute. What I can say is that I've been using this software for the last seven years and it's been wonderful. Not flawless, but very good. It's written in a way that always gives the highest priority to the audio engine and puts the UI and everything else second. Which is very important in a situation where we're dealing with as low audio buffer and as low audio latency as possible. Now, let me show you Bob's site, which is rmllabs.com. You can learn more about Bob here, but the things we are concerned about resides in the product section. As you can see, Bob has several products, but at this moment we are interested in SAC. This is the softwares page and you can familiarize yourself with it, or you can just watch this video, cause that's what I'm for. Or you can do both, go to the site and read, but after you've watched the video. Ok, there are two important sections of this site I want to draw your attention to. First, the forum. Hover over the support section and click here. Another page will open and on it you'll find this blue folder called SAC. Enter and here's the forum. This is actually a very important section of the site. SAC has created quite a community over the years. People are sharing experience and ideas. They're asking and answering questions, talking about problems and helping each other. So, you can always use the forum throughout your journey knowing that it's here. And second, the download page. You can find it again under support and then if you click here. On this page you'll find the demo version of SAC on which you can try all the things I'm going to show you in the videos to come. You can also download the SAC's remote software and the manual. And finally there's the online store if you wish to buy something. Now, with that out of the way, let's get to the fun stuff. I will quickly show you what the software can do and try to get you hyped for our project. Without further ado, it looks like that. Or like that. Or like that. Or like that. Actually, it has different UI elements which you can rearrange and save. You have 120 input audio channels at your disposal and every one of those channels can be mono, like this kick, or stereo like these room mics. Then you have 16 stereo buses and each one of them can be configured as a standard subgroup like that or a DCA like that. Then you have 6 aux sends. Only 6? Really? 
Don't worry, they're quite enough, because you won't need to use them for anything else than effect sends. Finally, you get 8 stereo mains. You can use them just to do different mix minuses, to send sound to different places, or configure them for surround. Next, we move to the FAT channel, or the wide mixer as it's called in SAC. Let's take a closer look at what you can do with every audio channel. You can choose the input source here. Even if the source is stereo, you can make it mono in several different ways. Below, you've got a digital trim. Then, you can reverse the phase with several different options and swap the left and right channels. You can send the channel to as many subgroups or main outputs as you like. 1 through 8 are the mains, 9 through 24 are the subs. You have at your disposal a 5-band equalizer and every band can do every frequency from 40 Hz to 15 kHz. Then, you have a separate adjustable high cut and low cut filters. Below, you've got a standard compressor and a gate with all the functions you can expect from them. Finally, on the left, you have the standard solo and mute buttons and the fader for the selected channel. And then, you have the pan control if you work in stereo or the surround joystick if you work in surround. And here are the aux sends. And that's it. No, no it's not. Now to the cool stuff. Every audio channel and every aux return and every subgroup and every master channel has the ability to work with native or DirectX or VST plugins. You can put them pre-fader or post-fader. Do you remember all this stuff that we talked about in the previous episodes? All that works here. You can even take the clean signal from an electric guitar or bass and make their whole sound right here through virtual amplifiers and cabinets. And even cooler, you can insert virtual instruments on audio channels like this contact player for example and play them directly from SAC. And finally, the greatest gem of this software, the monitor mixers. See, I don't say mixes, I say mixers. And here's why. If you click here, you'll see that we are currently working on our front of house mixer. And if you look down, you'll find 24 more mixers. Every one of those can be used as a monitor mixer for a musician on the stage or for whatever else your heart desires. If you go to an empty mixer, it will look more or less like the front of house one. But it doesn't have to. Let's go to the second mixer, which I dedicated to the vocalist. As you can see, it's arranged differently. Now, let's imagine you are the vocalist. What would you want to control and what's important to you? First, your master channel, which is your overall sound level. Then, your own voice. And you can start from scratch. These channel settings can be totally independent from the front of house ones. You want a different EQ? No problem. Different compression or no compression? Again, no problem. You may use entirely new settings or use some of the front of house settings and build on top of them. Then, here are your effect channels. You can use the reverb or the delay from the front of house mixer or if you don't like them, you can put your own just for you. Then, a subgroup for the rest of the band because it's easier to make all of them quieter or louder with just one fader. And then you've got all the other individual channels, but the most important are right here in the beginning. It's the same for your drummer. Your master fader, then a group just for the drums and another for the rest of the band, then your individual drum channels and your effects. Then the bass channel, cause it might be important to you as a drummer, and finally the rest of the band. But the 24 mixing consoles are much more powerful than that. Let's say, for example, that the show you're working on should be heard in three different halls and on large screen with big speakers in front of the building. And on top of that, there's a separate mix just for broadcasting. With SAC, you can do it all with just one machine. Because, didn't I mention that? You can connect up to 27 remote computers, wired or wireless, to the main machine. And every one of those computers can control all the mixers, or just the monitor mixers, or just one specific mixer depending on the rights it's given. 
And those can be even very cheap computers because they are just remotes, they don't run the audio engine. So give remotes to every member of the band and then put a sound engineer with his own remote on every location and give them a separate mixer to work on. That way every mix could be appropriate for its own location and acoustic differences and everyone will be happy. Eventually. Now, I'm not saying that it's always the best idea to do exactly that. It may not be mainly because of safety reasons and failure management, but you're able to. Another thing, and I've mentioned this before, you can mix with just your mouse and keyboard or with a touchscreen device, but you can also connect different controllers like this, or this, or this, or even this, and mix with them. I've used all of them successfully. Now, in the very end of this video, I will allow myself to balance out the enthusiastic tone a little bit. Everything has two sides to it and I want to be completely exhaustive and honest. It's good to know that RML Labs is not a big software company. In fact, I think Bob writes the code all by himself. And SAC is relatively old software, which some believe is near the end of its life. It's also good to know that SAC is a program which is mainly designed to work on Windows XP and generally speaking works more or less worse on newer versions of Windows. But considering this, I spent a month and a half testing SAC on modern hardware with different versions of Windows and with a variety of plugins and I can safely say it's still a viable option today. And now to the good news again. Bob actually kept his promise and made a brand new 64-bit version of SAC just recently. On the outside it looks like the old one, but the audio engine seems to be entirely new and rewritten. That's why it doesn't follow the version numbers of its 32-bit sibling, which at this moment is at version 4.6, but starts from version 1.1. So we have a new SAC, and as we speak, this new version is being polished. There is a topic in the forum where users can report bugs for Bob to fix and things are getting better. So, the new 64-bit SAC may not be entirely ready and bug-free today, but I guess soon it will be ready for prime time. And I'm actually very excited to try it out. You can also download a demo of the 64-bit version and even buy it if you want. Actually, the best part is, our work on building audio consoles and this channel won't be stuck on one software. I wanted to begin with SAC because of its many qualities, but after I show you how to use it, we'll continue exploring other options, some of them already existing and some of them just appearing on the horizon. Ok, over with this video. I wanted to show you what are the possibilities before you, just to get you hyped if you decide that you want to try to build your own sound mixing console. If you do, go and download the demo version of SAC, because in the next few videos we'll dive into the software's details and learn how to set it up and get you going. So see you there and thank you for watching. Oh, you're still here, great. There are a few more important things I need to mention, like the video you just watched is part of a series and all the episodes are connected. So, if you stumbled on this episode by accident and you wasn't sure what exactly I was talking about, you can go and watch the previous episodes or at least the first episode over there, which explains the idea of the whole endeavor. And I'll be very happy if you liked the video. It's part of one big tutorial about how to build your own sound mixing console. So if you did, please consider clicking on the like button. And if you find this topic interesting or useful, you may subscribe and click on the bell so you'll be notified when I'm ready with the next video. And I know there are people out there who do what I do and know more than me. So, if you know something that I don't or have ideas for new episodes, please tell me. I'll be happy to also learn from you.